Hey guys, look, I'm actually up close enough that you can see how my gross my face is, but it's really cold in my room, so I'm under the blankets, because that's the only way I can be warm, even though I have all the lights on, and there's actually decent lighting, and uh, I also have a candle burning, um, doing my homework on my new bed, probably there'll be pictures of that somewhere. Definitely, I did put them on my Instagram story, but that was, like, a while ago. So, if you didn't see that, guess you didn't see that. Um, oh, finally, the heater's turning on. Maybe it'll warm up in here. I'm going to do some more speech practices, because one of them's on Monday, and one of them's on Wednesday. So, I need to be ready. So, let's do it. In 2018... One in 59 kids was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. I was almost one of them. And because of that, I decided to research this topic and learn more about it. Many females with autism go undiagnosed for years, so it's really good to know everything that we can about it. Autism is a common disorder, but seeing someone with true knowledge about it seems very uncommon. Today, I'm going to be talking to you, giving you a brief overview of the subject, learning about its history, its causes, and the kinds of minds that result from having autism. Let's begin with history. There are two different theories about autism. The first one came from Leo Kanner in 1943. He discovered this very debilitating kind of reaction in a few of his patients they were unresponsive and he decided to call this autism uh and but he and and started to like open up a clinic for diagnosing it but he used extremely selective criteria and his uh his theory for why autism existed was that the parents were cold and neglectful which created stigma and shame around having an autistic child because it meant that you were a bad parent then in the 1970s through the 1990s, Judith Gold and Lorna Wing uh, decided that this was untrue because they had relationships with people who were autistic, very obviously, and weren't completely unresponsive. So they went and they looked through an entire town to look at a bunch of other people with autism and discovered that yeah it's not just like that and then they went and they found a paper written in 1944 by a man named Asperger. Asperger had a facility for treating people, children with learning disabilities and it was extremely different than anyone else's interpretation. They used music, uh, body movement, and acting as some of the things, which is not something you would have found in a typical school at that time. And he also had a much broader definition of autism and the symptoms with it. So in the late 19, or in the early 1990s, late 1980s, Judith Gold and Lorna Wing uh, helped um, the American Psychiatric Association to start using Asperger's criteria for the autism instead of Connors and that is why the rate of people diagnosed with autism suddenly skyrocketed also because suddenly we had depictions in the media like Rain Man uh, of people with autism and people were able to see what the actual symptoms of it were and they would be able to be like hey I feel like I know someone with that we should go get it checked out and then they were able to have better treatment so then people started to wonder about the causes and there were a lot of possibilities just i think everyone here knows this but uh vaccinations are not something that causes autism however a child born with sperm from somebody who is a lot older like sperm that's defective because the person was old that can have a chance of becoming autistic uh having a woman exposed to val Valproic acid, valproic acid during her pregnancy or to certain communicable diseases that can also contribute to autism. But those are very small things. Uh, the main, some of the main things that contribute to autism are genetics. But even in identical twins, it's only 77% 
shown that so that there is a lot of other factors that still happen uh, there are 200 to 600 possible genes that can contribute to autism some of them can do it by themselves by being mutated and some of them work together to do that and some people have a gene that's mutated that mutation is unique to them it's not in any of their parents which is really interesting and a way that we can ways that we can really help with that is an early diagnosis as in watching a child in the first one to three months of their age and diagnosing it then and treating it then because that is the time when they first start developing t uh, traits like being introspective and isolated and not interacting with people well and not getting those social skills that's when it happens so that's when we need to like be intensely helping them out and getting so you would think babies can't be responding to things but they really do way more and you can tell when a child might be developing autism and you can't really stop the autism from happening but you can keep it from being the debilitating time you can help it not be the debilitating kind if you interact with the child a lot and really help them during their developmental years between the ages of zero and two. Those are the best times to do it. And so it can really improve their lives and help them be able to have less learning disabilities and stuff like that. So what is the mind of someone with autism like? What's going on inside their heads? Uh, something that many people with autism have, but not everyone, is a visual language so for them instead of when you say something they see a word in their head they see the picture of it because to them words are just abstract concepts it doesn't look like the thing that they are told like that it they are told when they're talking about soup they see a bowl of soup they don't see the word soup because it doesn't look like soup and so then that makes them not correlate in their heads which makes it very hard for them to communicate verbally so uh, some guy invented this app for people for kids who are nonverbal called Avaz, which shows pictures of different things. They can click on it and then it will say the words out loud so that whoever is taking care of them can help with that and make sure that they know what's going on with the kid. And then this guy invented another thing called free speech and the free speech engine, which takes the words and puts them into a grammatically correct sentence and also uses the pictures in a way to help the child understand how grammar works without using grammar. For instance, if you're saying I want soup, you can have the child pick soup and then you can have the child pick uh, want and then you can have the child pick, so you have the child pick soup and then you can say what, you child pick I and then you say what is it that, gonna work on that part. Anyhow, some things that can cause the visual language are having thicker connection between the eye and the brain. Uh, some people have been found to actually think with that part of their brain instead of the other part. What kinds of thinkers besides visual thinkers are there and what can those thinkers be really great at? So visual thinkers uh, can be really great at graphic design, computers, photography, and industrial design. Pattern thinkers can be amazing mathematicians, software engineers, computer programmers, and people with word minds can be great journalists and stage actors. But people with autism generally have a harder time learning social skills, so that's something they have to be taught. To conclude, autism is a very common disorder, and now you are in the ranks of the uncommon people who know things about it. Specifically, you know a little bit of history, a little bit of the causes, and a little bit of the kinds of minds that result from autism. Whether you have autism or not, something to remember is this quote by Faith Shagade Cole. The pursuit of normality is the ultimate sacrifice of potential. The chance for greatness, for progress, and for change dies the moment we try to be like someone else. Thank you. In 2018, 1 in 59 kids were diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. I was almost one of them, so I decided to study this subject. Many females with autism go completely undiagnosed, or it doesn't happen for a long time, so it's good to know the facts. Autism is a common disorder, but seeing someone who actually has true knowledge about it is kind of uncommon. 
There are two theories about autism. The first was proposed by Leo Connor in 1943. He had extremely selective criteria and only addressed the problems of children who were unresponsive and very shut in. He blamed the parents for this, saying that they were neglective and cold, and that created a stigma of shame around autism. In, in the 1970s, Judith Gold and Lorna Wing decided that this was BS and decided to search for some other sources, and they found a paper in 2018, one in 59 kids were diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. I was almost one of them, so I decided to study this. Many females with autism go undiagnosed for years, so it's good to know all the facts. Autism is a common disorder, but seeing someone with knowledge about it is kind of uncommon. We're going to look at three different aspects of it, the history, the causes, and the different kinds of minds that result from it. Let's start with history. There are two theories about autism. The first was developed by Leo Connor in 1943. He had extremely selective criteria and only worked with the most shut off from the world patients. He blamed the parents for their behavior, saying that the parents were uncaring and cold to their children, which created a stigma of shame around the disorder. In the 1970s, Judith Gold and Lorna Wing decided that this was BS. They decided to do their own research, and they discovered Asperger's paper, written in 1944, about his own theories, which involved a much broader criteria for diagnosis and a much better way of dealing with it once the diagnosis was made. They got the American Psychiatric Association to put his criteria in there in the late 1980s and early 1990s, which is why there was a sudden increase in diagnoses then, because there was a much broader criteria and people were way more aware of it because it became public knowledge. Now let's look at the causes. Genetics is a large cause, though not the only one, and it can have up to 77% of the problem. 200 to 600 possible genes for autism exist, and they can work singularly or together and as their mutations. The mutations can be unique to one person, neither of their parents or their family history having this mutation in them. The best way to deal with it is an early diagnosis within the first three months of birth. If the child is diagnosed early enough, they can be worked with until they're two years old during the first formation of their mind to help keep them from becoming too isolated. They'll still have the effects of autism, but they won't be as isolated and shut in, and they might be able to become verbal or be on more of the high-functioning side of the spectrum, and so it can be really helpful. The third point we're going to look at is interesting minds, the different minds that can result from autism. So uh, a lot of kids with autism, not all of them, have visual language. They have a hard time speaking or they just think in pictures. Words are abstract concepts to them. They can't visualize what they're speaking, they visualize what they're seeing, so that's how they communicate. And the thing that can cause this is having a thicker connection between their eye to their brain than people without that disorder. A man invented this app called Ivaz for nonverbal kids, which allows kids to learn words using pictures. They click on the picture and it says the word out loud. He invented another app called Free Speech and the Free Speech Engine, which allows the kids to learn grammar by putting together a series of pictures and asking questions about them. And this app he's discovered, if used correctly, can actually teach people to learn different languages. And it works better than other ways of learning languages because they didn't have to use a bridge language to communicate. Instead of learning Swahili through English, they're learning Swahili through Swahili, and it makes it work much faster. There are other methods of learning, and uh, there are other kinds of minds, and those minds can be different, good at different things. Visual thinkers can be great at graphic design, computers, photography, and industrial design. Pattern thinkers are mathematicians, software engineers, or computer programmers. People with word minds often can be journalists or stage actors. But people with autism, well, can, they can be amazing at some of these things, often need to be taught social skills because it just doesn't come naturally to them. To conclude, autism is a common disorder, and now you are in the ranks of the uncommon people who know things about it, specifically a little bit about its history, a little bit about its causes, and a little bit about the interesting minds that it helps create. But whether you have autism or not, something that you should remember is a quote by Faith Jejade.
the pursuit of normality is the ultimate sacrifice of potential. The chance for greatness, for progress, and for change dies the moment we try to be like someone else. Thank you. In 2018, 1 in 59 kids were diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. I could potentially have been one of them, so I decided to research this topic and learn more about it. Many females with autism go undiagnosed, so it's good to know everything that we can. Autism is a common disorder, but seeing someone with true knowledge about it is, seems uncommon. Let's, today I'm going to tell you about the history, some of the causes, and the different kinds of minds that people with autism can have. Let's start with history. There are two different theories about autism. The first one was promoted by Leo Connor in the 1943. He had super selective criteria and he blamed parents for it, saying that it was from being cold and not caring about your children, which brought the stigma of shame around it. But in the 1970s, Judith Gold and Lorna Wing were like, this is BS. And so they did their own research and found a paper written by a man named Asperger in 1944. He ran a clinic for children with learning disorders, and um, he had a much broader system of diagnosis and a much different way of dealing with it than Connor did. They got the Golden Wing got uh, the American Psychiatric Association to put Asperger's criteria in there, and then uh, uh, then that's why so many people started getting diagnosed with autism more because they actually had re real knowledge about it. Let's look now at some causes. Uh, genetics has up to 77% cause, but it's not the only thing that can, like, be causing it. There are between 216, 200 and 600 possible genes that can work by themselves or together to create the mutation that causes autism. They can there are some that can be unique in people, like their parents don't have it, it's just them. With early diagnosis, we can work with kids at a young age, meaning between one and three months, through their formative years, which is from one to two and younger, to help them become more interactive and less isolated, which will help the disorder to not, like, take over them and just have, they can just sort of have the, like, good parts and not have the parts that make it really hard for people to live. So people with autism, some of them have a visual language because the actual concept of words is too abstract for them. The word soup doesn't look like a picture of soup and so they can't associate them. And people like this sometimes have a thicker thing connecting their eye to their brain and some studies show that some people with that actually think with the connection to the, this part here which is really interesting. So those people think in pictures and videos, which makes it kind of hard for them to communicate verbally because words just, they don't compute. So um, people have invented these apps. One of them is an, called Avaz, and it has pictures, and so they can click on the picture of what they want, and then it'll say it verbally, but it doesn't make sentences. So um, there is an app called Free Speech, which uses different questions to help the kids make sentences with the pictures, and it teaches them grammar. And the Free Speech engine translates whatever they're saying into the language that is their native language, usually English. Different kinds of minds can be created by having autism. Uh, some people with autism uh, are visual thinkers, and those people are like really great at graphic design, computers, photography, and industrial design. Other people are more likely to be pattern thinkers. They're great mathematicians, software engineers, and computer programmers. Then there are word minds, and those can be journalists and stage actors. So there are all sorts of different kinds of minds that can result from having autism because the way that autism works is that it makes one part of your area technically stronger but then it takes away from your social skills area so social skills are something that people with autism often have to like work hard to learn and that makes it a little bit harder for them to function well in society but that's mainly just because society is like so to conclude autism is a common disorder and now you are in the ranks of the uncommon people who actually know some stuff about it. And the stuff that you know includes some history, some causes, and the different kinds of minds that result from having autism. 
But whether you have autism or not, something to remember is this quote by Faith Jugade Cole. The pursuit of normality is the ultimate sacrifice of potential. The chance for greatness, for progress, and for change dies the moment we try to be like someone else. Thank you.